First of all, let me thank everybody, especially Merle, uh, uh, Ophelia, and Yuli for organizing uh, this conference of all these people or, uh, that are organized the conference for all the effort they have made to allow all of us to discuss uh, our research in such amazing conference. I'm not going to talk uh, now, but I leave uh, uh, the floor uh, to Lorenzo, uh, who is a biomedical engineer at the University of Pisa, and uh, will explain uh, um, our work in detail. I'll mute the microphone, Lorenzo. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, an engineer as usual. I <laughs> good, good morning. Hello. Hi, everybody. And thanks also by me for this possibility and this participation. So uh, I'm an engineer. So I will talk about the um, technical part, let's say. Uh, so let's start from um, an interesting definition that I found on literature. This is very recent. So I will start from this because um, this definition of a social robot, which is uh, the main topic of this presentation and of our application is uh, very important, meaning that it, it highlights, and I like this part, the fact that the agent uh, to be defined uh, as a social robot has to be obviously physically embodied, uh, has to be autonomous in a, in a good range, and engage in social interactions with humans by communicating, cooperating, and making decisions. So he has to be able to display thoughts and feelings as uh, humans do. So uh, not only the appearance of the robot has to resemble the human, but also his behavior and uh, his, uh, the, the emotional capabilities and also the way uh, the robot process the information and also the emotion. Uh, and the robot has to be socially aware of uh, their environment. So a social perception and the possibility to extract social cues from, from the environment. Uh, let's go on with the next slide. And I'm glad to introduce you FACE. FACE is our social robot uh, from the University of Pisa. Uh, FACE is an acronym uh, that stands for Facial Autonomous Automaton for Conveying Emotions. Actually, the robot is not able only to convey emotion, but is able to recognize, process, and convey, so express human emotions. The mechatronics of this robot is made by David Anson, so Anson Robotics. So we can say that uh, FACE is uh, like a sister of Sophia, that I'm sure you know. Uh, the head and the neck are robotic parts that can be controlled by an artificial intelligence. Um, practically, she has, uh, I'm sorry if I say she, but it's a genoid, so I will use this term. Uh, so she has a 3D printed skull designed to host 24 seven models that control um, the, the, the facial expression and three for uh, controlling the neck. Uh, previous slide, sorry. Um, thank you, Katerina. Oui. Echo. So um, the materials, the, also the materials are important. She has this material called rubber, is a silicon based flash like material. Um, studied to reproduce the mechanical behavior and the aesthetics of the human skin. And the study about the movement of the facial expression is base, based on Paul Ekman's facial action coding system. So the, the facial muscles are grouped in action units and we uh, reproduce the movement of an action unit with one or two servo motors inside the head. Uh, then, uh, next slide, the, um, the robot has as I, I said before, it's very important to have, let's say, a, a social perception of the environment. So it has this software called the scene analyzer, uh, developed by our researchers, which use also the Kinect, but many uh, softwares that are uh, working in what you are seeing. This is the word uh, as the robot sees uh, and perceives. Uh, as you can see, we are able to detect um, yeah, the sounds, the position, the 3D position, because using the Kinect, we have also this information about three-dimensional environment. So we have postures, gestures. We have another software developed by uh, the Fraunhofer Institute, which is sure to detect uh, and estimate the gender of, of people, um, their um, age, their facial expressions. Then we have another software that produced this 
pink point, which is uh, the saliency point of the image. So the study about the 2D image, about contrast, uh, shapes. So we have many concurring software for extracting features from the environment, social features especially. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is another video that uh, show you the um, some basic expressions performed by face. So you can see anger, happiness, sadness, disgust, and many other uh, facial expressions that are fundamental in a social interaction. And we can go on. Uh, let's pass also to the part of the cognitive system. Okay, so. Uh, this is also especially designed and specifically designed for social interaction. This is why it's called a social emotional artificial intelligence. So uh, why this name is a cognitive system for controlling social robots, not only face, uh, that endows them with the possibility to perform also logical deduction, induction, abstract reasoning, and emulate human emotion processing. Why I'm saying this? Because this software, this control system is based on a synergy between neural network based softwares as the one we have seen for social perception. So to extract features for, from the environment. And when this feature becomes uh, an abstract uh, information, so a high level information, this high level information is processed by another um, software, which is on top and is an expert system based on, on rules, so logic rules. And with this kind of software, you can uh, emulate human reasoning. You can emulate also a specific competencies in a specific domain of knowledge. And you can, um, in, in general, uh, let's say, manipulate these symbols, this abstract information for them going out from the system and controlling them, the, the motors of the robots. Uh, we implement with such a system also um, the somatic marker theory from neurosciences from, uh, from Antonio Damasio. So uh, the, the main part of this mechanism, which is summarized very simply in the, in the right part of the slide, is the fact that um, also if we know other <laughs> approach about emotions and reasoning, uh, Damasio demonstrates uh, on impaired patients that emotions are fundamental for reasoning and for decision making. So they are not distractors, but uh, optimizer, uh, driver of decisions. And we implement this kind of mechanism in uh, our robots. So we have uh, this internal representation like emotions, feelings of the robot represented by the well-known circumplex model of effect of Russell. So balance and arousal values. Uh, so it's a social artificial intelligence because it's able to detect social cues the, and is emotional because the social cues moves these, move these internal values of the robot. This movement of the mood of the robot can lead to some uh, labeling of events, of choices, of subjects that will bias the behavior of the robot accordingly to, to its experience, its past experience and past interactions with subjects. Um, okay, we can go on. Uh, to do this kind of, uh, let's say, modulation of behavior, we need to split these emotional values of the robot, uh, which we call expression and mood. What is the difference? The expression is something that is uh, reactive, quick, uh, not very ponderate, uh, so this is, these values are directly linked with the motors of the robot. So if the robot has to perform an expression, this is uh, represented with a point on this plan that uh, correspond to uh, 24 values of the motors of the face. So uh, orchestrating these movements of the, of the facial expression. And it's very quick, it's very reactive, as I said, and not ponderate. The mood is different. So events and, and uh, events happening in the context of the robot, move the moods in a, a more smooth way, in a smoother way. Uh, so it, it's more gradual, the movement. So you can see a point not switching uh, quickly from a reaction to another, but uh, moving smoothly in, into this plan, okay? If this point goes out, exceeds, let's say, a, a threshold uh, that, that can be uh, perceived as a, an inner circle inside uh, this, this uh, emotional space, then uh, 
a labeling can occur. And this labeling is the somatic marker, which I was talking about in, in, the, in the previous slides. Uh, so uh, an, an internal value, uh, which is lower, which, is, uh, which leads to more pondering decision and an expression that is an expressive behavior that is more reactive and immediately expressed by the robot. Now, um, uh, another thing that we can do with, with this kind of uh, double system, so neural network based and then rule based, is another very interesting thing that uh, a doctorate student of mine is working on, which is the design of a specific personality in a robot. And uh, it's not the typical uh, personality that we can see applied in robotics in the, at the state of the art. So referred to the personality traits, which are more static, let's say. Uh, here we have a more dynamic personality that can be designed in very detail because we have a structure, a structure of features from the situation as we have seen in the scene analyzer. But then we have the possibility to design, as you can see here, a network of cognitive and affective units, mediating units, which decide according to expectancies, uh, goals, effects, and uh, let's say behavioral scripts, so competencies, uh, some specific behaviors. And you can also, you have also the explainability of the code. So you can also ask, or let's say investigate why the robot performs some actions or take specific decisions in an environment. Let's imagine how useful is such kind of system when we have to, uh, let's say, vary the behavior of the robots and study how uh, it, uh, what it implies in the reactions of an interlocutor, a human interlocutor. Uh, and I um, will also show this uh, video. This is uh, an example of interaction with face. I am a, a bit sorry for this movement is uh, due to a, a spring that was too rigid in the neck of the robot anyway. So you have a bit of vibration. Anyway, you can see a typical interaction. Uh, so it, this is me entering the room. This is Roberto. Uh, the robot here is completely autonomous. As you can see here, you have the in the screen, the scene analyzer working. Uh, uh, the robot seen very near uh, with his face. And you can see the parameters that are changing. So the attention of the robot switch in turn taking from a subject to another or to environment if subjects are not doing anything that draws the attention of the robots. And the expression values are continuously changing. Here, for example, I'm invading the private space of the robot, which is annoyed by this and pass uh, its attention to the other guy. Uh, now we are simply going away. The robots will uh, come back uh, with low arousal to the detection of environment, as you can see here uh, with, the, with the near camera. Okay, so this arousal goes, goes down and come back to the environment. So uh, this is a, a typical example of uh, a bit reactive, let's say, uh, interaction that can be enriched with uh, higher rules that determines a, a more complex behavior. Uh, okay, let's pass to the novelty, which is, uh, let's say, the song of <laughs> face, and is uh, the name is Abel. Uh, so, who is Abel? Abel is uh, this new robot we are designing. Uh, which is, as you can see, have uh, an extremely realistic aesthetics um, and is designed not by Hansen this time, but in collaboration with Gustav Hogan. This choice is determined by the fact that we want this object to be uh, an incredible emotion elicitor also for uh, the interlocutors. And we need uh, to uh, involve in our project this kind of people. Why I'm saying this? because Gustav Hogan is one of the most required collaborators of Hollywood and uh, of movies. Uh, so he uh, works with LucasArts for the incredible uh, creators of the last Star Wars movies, for example. Um, he's designed the designer of the head you can see in Prometheus, uh, of the robot of Ex Machina and many, many other fantastic creators. Uh, so um, he's... Um, he is the owner of Biomimics in London, and with him we designed this uh, creature. So uh, the novelty is that the, is the fact that the head, the neck, the arms, and also the hands are robotic controllable parts. 
um, the, the level of realism is higher. Uh, and the mouth movement, and also I will add the eyes movements are studied very well to, to be very realistic for the interlocutors. Uh, for Abel, we will uh, apply the, the social, emotional, artificial intelligence that I quickly present before. Um, so, um, the, and the other big novelty is the fact that Abel will be integrated in a network of effective computing devices, unobtrusive devices, so you can imagine bracelets or t-shirts, sensorized uh, te textures and, and uh, textiles, um, and also uh, an EEG element. And all these devices would be connected to the social perception of the robot. So the, uh, let's say the estimation of the psycho-emotional um, state of the interlocutor of ABLE will be uh, more reliable and uh, monitored in real time by the robot that uh, thanks to our systems that uh, I presented uh, will be, uh, will, will have the possibility to perform an adaptive behavior according to the choices and the uh, feelings of the subjects. Or let's say take different decisions according to the reaction that the subject is probably also not expressing, uh, let's say explicitly, but he will be able to detect uh, thanks to this kind of instrumentation. Uh, so this is the part of uh, technical <laughs> materials. So now I will leave the room to Katerina that will talk about applications and neuroeconomics, which is not my field. So thank you again. Okay, uh, thank you, Lorenzo. So, the, um, uh, first of all, I'm going to briefly introduce uh, to you one of uh, our research that uh, rely on uh, one of uh, uh, this humanoid okay, uh, face. We are not uh, conducting any experiment yet uh, with, uh, with the ABLE, but I will show you uh, how we think uh, uh, it, we will use it in, in future experiments. So this uh, research that I'm going to present, it's, uh, um, it's um, uh, recently accepted for publication scientific report, it's a joint work with other engineers and economists. And uh, we study um, trust in a human robot interaction. In particular, we replicate a well-known experiment in economics, uh, a modified trust game that has been published uh, in uh, Econometrica uh, in uh, 2006 uh, by Richard Ness and Dufenberg. So in this um, research, there are two players, a trustor and a trustee, and please. in all this game, uh, both players are better off if they cooperate. Why? Because uh, the trustor can uh, decide uh, whether or not to enter the game, and when uh, if the, he decided to enter, then uh, the trustee can um, decide whether to let uh, this player down by not rolling a dice, or instead he can uh, try to roll a dice and see whether uh, um, also the, the trustor is going to earn more money from uh, uh, his choice. So why this is important? Because in this experiment, uh, participant, so the trustor and the trustee can share a message. And this message can, uh, in our experiment can contain a promise or uh, an, empty, an empty message. While in the original paper, it was uh, the choice of the participant what to tell. And indeed, uh, we selected a few sentences in this experiment. And, and as the, this author uh, um, finds out that uh, Whenever a, trust, a trustee receives a, a, a promise okay, um, from the trustor, um, the likelihood to uh, participate in the game increase. So what we ask in this paper is, uh, uh, is it the case also that if uh, the participant, the, trust, uh, the trustor receive a promise uh, 
uh, in this experiment, uh, we will see the same things. Uh, sorry, I didn't say it. Uh, in our experiment, the trustor is always the human participant, while the trustee can either be a human, a computer box, or the human face. Uh, so in our experiment, it's what we want to see if uh, the human participant that received a promise uh, from the humanoid react in the same way or differently from a, a human participant that received the same promise uh, either from another human or the computer box. So what we find is that uh, uh, whenever the human participant perceived okay, uh, the counterpart uh, very human-like, uh, high in human likeness, so very human, uh, the likelihood that uh, uh, this human participant will play the game increases. So it's going to trust the counterpart. And this is only happen uh, when uh, uh, it's playing with the human and the human. So we do not observe these things uh, when they play with the computer box. Another interesting feature of our experiment is that we are able to connect psychophysiological data of the individual player, so of the human. And in particular, what we see is that uh, um, there, there is a significant difference in the physio physiological arousal of the human when he's playing with the social robot. To make you understand why this experiment is um, interesting and is an application of what uh, Lorenzo have just explained you, I show you how the robot take a decision in our experiment because uh, this is really uh, crucial because in this experiment, uh, participant knows uh, that uh, the social robot and the box uh, will follow their behavioral rules and they will decide autonomously whether to roll or not roll the dice. And how you see uh, the choice depends on the mood of the robot, okay, of the artificial agent. If, uh, for example, a participant uh, look at uh, the robot and smile, look at, at uh, the robot in a, with a happy face, so she will be happy and she move on, on the right part uh, of this plane. So she will be happy and she will play role. On the other hand, if the human participant uh, does not seem engaged in the interaction uh, or look at her in an angry face, uh, she will be in a bad mood. So she will go on the other part of the plane and she will don't play role. What is important in our experiment that this is a one-shot interaction, meaning that uh, the robot does not learn from previous interaction. Each time that uh, she met another player, she will start from the origin. So she doesn't have any type of memory. She doesn't learn. And this is, uh, we think uh, it's another uh, important direction for future studies because we want also to allow uh, the robot to learn, okay, from the reaction of a, a participant uh, something. For example, uh, a norm or um, other, um, other characteristic that uh, occur in the interaction, okay? So um, let me also briefly introduce uh, what we think will be other, um, another field of research where we aim to use uh, both the, uh, the young humanoid and uh, the face. And in particular, we think that uh, these two humanoids can be fruitfully used uh, when studying teamwork. Why? Because there is a very limited research, experimental research uh, on, this, uh, on this field. And we think that this is important, especially because uh, from an economic point of view, we see that in a way this actor, either uh, with a body or without uh, any type of body, so artificially agents are playing a role in many economic situations. And what we understood by having a, uh, a, okay, a fresh uh, study of the literature uh, that what really seems to matter is the task. Uh, in particular, uh, as, um, as it, it, it emerged that if we have a, a team of work uh, with the, um, 
a, an artificial agent and a, a robot and, and a human, we see that the human tend to increase the effort whenever the task that they are performing are different. On the other hand, if the tasks are, uh, are very um, are very similar, okay, they tend to decrease if effort. This is really important because it tells us that uh, the task that we are going to choose will make a difference. And this is also important, I think, uh, um, le even later today, some uh, Ulla, okay, Matthias is going to talk about that, I'm not sure about that, but in any case, it seems also that uh, we are very selective in the type of task that we want to either delegate or share with uh, an artificial agent. If we want to share some specific task that appear repetitive, uh, that uh, we are, might be willing. On the other hand, if there are moral or social choice, we are uh, more, um, let's say, willing to do that. And why this is important? Because it, to increase acceptance, it seems really that we need to design the robot in a way that is, uh, it seems it seem suitable for the task. And this is not always the case. So what's the role of face and double. We think that this study that we are now planning to do are important because we can compare, okay, an adult uh, humanoid with a young one. And one of the features that may be crucial is that the younger uh, humanoids appear more vulnerable. And this is also uh, interesting from uh, other research that uh, appeared recently that suggests another important role for artificial intelligence, artificial, artificial agents in a team that is the one of social catalysts. So even if we are not willing to give them any type specific task, they can play a role in a team by simply um, reducing, for example, hostility in the team or make it more funny, uh, even though they are not shared, let's say, the result of the uh, team of work. So I think that um, this is, I think that we are also done with the time, no? we are right. So, and I hope that if any of you have interest in this aspect, we are very willing to to work together. Thank you very, very much to the two of you for this very, very fascinating um, uh, talk. Um, we have time for one quick question. So I just pick one from the chat. Uh, when does a robot that reads and conveys human-like emotions cease to be socially interactive and begins to be manipulative? Is there a clear-cut distinction between the two? Mm. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Uh, Katarina, you or me? Well, I think that uh, uh, to become manipulated, it should be it's become uh, extremely intelligent from a social, uh, emotional point of view, which I guess uh, theoretically it's possible, could be. I don't know which is the line, uh, but should be very, very smart, I guess. <laughs> I would also add who is not manipulative. I mean, Manipulative is a, a negative exception, but uh, I mean, we manipulate emotions also for reaching a goal and also for reaching a good goal. So let's say that uh, the robot has to uh, manipulate by in a good way, meaning that, for example, if uh, a subject is getting angry uh, during an interaction, the robot has to, let's say, manipulate, but just to be more kind, for example, with the subject to calm down the subject and uh, let's say uh, keeping the interaction productive. So uh, it, it has not to adapt, uh, sorry, it has not to manipulate, but it, it has to adapt to the, 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 the team, let's say, okay. <laughs>